Well, uh, obviously very, very thrilled to be here and, and be involved in a, in a program with such great rich history uh, and, and just great support, not only from the administrative side, but the fan side. It, it, it makes it a lot of fun for the coaches and the players, and uh, we're just excited to get going. we got a lot of work to do. Coach Nagy, Todd Richards with KFES and Cape Girardeau, okay. and, and congratulations, welcome. Thank you. And was there a, a tipping point when you when you had the conversations with Tim, maybe where you said, this is the place for me? Could you talk about what, because you've been at places obviously for quite a while, yeah. what, uh, what changed your mind or decided to influence you? Uh, that's a good question, but but uh, coming in here and, and meeting with uh, Tim and, and Chancellor Lane and, and Matt, uh, and just sitting down and talking with them, seeing uh, the commitment that they had to men's basketball and, and how badly they, they want to win and, and, and what they want to do, uh, is, that, that was important to me. And, you know, I would say uh, at, at Wright State when I was there, the AD that hired me, uh, today is his last day. He just retired. And I uh, loved working with him, Bob Grant. Uh, but, but there were things in flux there for me, too. And, and so uh, it, it was a really hard decision for uh, Jamie and me because of our family being there. And, and honestly, in terms of our emotions, neither one of us wanted to go. Uh, but I knew, I knew it was the right decision. And so we had to overcome the emotional part of it and work through that, and we did. Uh, and, and then we made a decision, and we know it's a great move. Scott, uh, lucky to have dog bites. I was going to ask, uh, where does this rank in terms of challenges? You're coming in, you're looking at basically assembling a new roster, and obviously you're going to need to get assistant coaches. Where does this rank for you? I get, yeah, I don't know how to rank it. it, it it's, uh, you know, it's not any different when I made the change to go to, go to Wright State. Now, we, we didn't have to assemble an entire new team, and, and I don't know if we will here, uh, you know, and that's what we need to work on first to see who, who can stay and uh, you know, we know many of them are in the portal, and uh, you know, we'll give them that that opportunity. But my guess is we can convince some of them to stay if, if we can talk about uh, how we play, wh what our plans are for them, and then and then from there we got to figure out who we need. Uh, and so, it, you know, it's it's difficult, but uh, you know, like I said out there, uh, just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not worth it. And two, how do you think? How easy do you think it's going to be to sell your style of play? Uh, not just for maybe a guy that wants to stay here, but maybe for 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 a new player. Yeah, it, uh, the way we play is not hard to sell at all. When you you know if we're scoring 85 points a game, kids like that, and uh, they know if you're a good offensive player, you're going to have freedom. And uh, freedom doesn't mean you get to do whatever you want to do. Freedom is earned, and and you earn that by being in the gym and and showing us what you can do. Uh, but but you know we we play pretty quickly. We we just do and. Uh, kids like that. Uh, I don't enjoy watching games that are in the 50s, and, and young men don't like playing in games that are in the 50s. Uh, but defense still has to be the most important thing. And, and but, but it's not hard to sell in terms of the offense. It's easy to recruit good offensive players if they know you're going to let them play. Hey, Coach, Danny by WSL TV over in Carterville. 15 minutes east of here. Yeah. Good to meet you. Um, just how much of it was uh, coming back to Illinois? Because you had been away from your home state for such a long time. Yeah. How much of that was a factor in making this decision to move from Dayton to Carbondale? Um, you know, I, I don't know if it was the, the biggest factor, but but ever since I left uh, Illinois, which would have been back in 90, uh, I've been trying to get back here. Now, I did come back for, for a few years to uh, Southern Illinois Edwardsville, and then we went, and then Jamie and I went back to South Dakota State. And so, for the past 29 years, we've been trying to get back to Illinois. And uh, I've interviewed with several schools in this conference, uh, in, in in the state. And so, you know, we've we've tried to get back here, and we're excited about it. They're just so so. Uh, I have such a good base here, really, because of what Coach Henson and Jimmy Collins and my dad did, and the relationships they built. Uh, just gives me such a great base to come back to, but 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 we're both very excited to be back and close to fa uh, family and friends. Is it lost on you that they are announced that your higher Illinois wins in the elite eight or goes to the? Elite oh well, my eight. wife is is extremely excited. Believe me, she I, I didn't stay up to watch a game because I need to get to bed, but she stayed up and watched. Coach Blake Sandlin, WPSD. For these mid-major jobs, you see a lot of younger hires, guys that want to use it as a springboard. Obviously, you've been in the coaching ranks for a long time. Do you view this job as maybe? 
a final destination for you, someplace you can, you know, finish your coaching career? Well, every, every place I've been, I thought that would be the last place. I, I'm not a, you know, I thought I would finish at South Coast State, and I thought I would finish at Wright State, and uh, so I, I think I'll finish here. And uh, I'm not a big job hunter. I wasn't looking for a job when this came along. And, uh, you know, I think I've proven that. I mean, in, in, in getting ready to start my 30th year, I've only been at two schools, and so I'm not out there. I'm not, I don't necessarily promote myself like that. Uh, more interested in, in the basketball side instead of the, you know, uh, being out there and being an entertainer and, and trying to get other people to hire you. Uh, and so, you know, that, that's how I look at every job I have. I really do. Coach, uh, Matt Barney, Riverdale. Radio. Um, you're 15 and 19 against the Atlee teams in your career. I don't know if you knew that exact statistic, but. Um, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, You've, you've played Northern Iowa several times. You know Coach Jake, I'm yeah. sure, pretty well. Yeah, I, I, um, actually, when when Ben was at North Dakota, I was at, you know, yeah. I, I coached against him. There so. you go. So, yeah. uh, but in terms of uh, Tim, when he started looking, he said he wanted to find someone that could stare down on the other side against the premier coaches, Brian Wardle, Darian DeVries, Corey, left for West Virginia, and match them. How do you plan to attack the Valley when you get into conference play? Um. Well, you know, I remember a long time ago when uh, South Dakota State, when we went from Division Two to Division One, and, and we got into the Summit League, which was the old Midcon, and tremendous coaches, Greg Campy and Scott Sutton, and they, they had great teams. And I was talking to my dad about that, like, man, there's just so many good coaches. Like, he said, let me, he said, let me stop you right there, okay? He says, quit trying to out-coach them and out-recruit them. That's what you have to do. You just you have to have better players, and so that that will be the key. You know that that's going to be the challenge that we have, and that's what we have to get after. Well, to, to build off of that real quickly, how do you plan to sell Southern to future recruits? Well, it's it's not hard to sell this place, and uh, I just don't think that it is. And when you look at the fan support, uh, how badly they want to win, the history, all that stuff, uh, you know where where other young men have been able to go from here, it's not hard to sell. Coach, the Valley's only been getting about one team in, in the postseason tournament recent years. Yeah. For that reason, do you do you put it? Do you de-emphasize uh, the conference race as opposed to the conference tournament? Well, I always emphasize the conference race. Uh, I just do. I, I you know I think in order to set yourself up best for the conference tournament, uh, that's what you want to do. But but I mean, if we're not trying to win the outright, what are we doing? Like that, that doesn't even make any sense to me. Like we're not just going to sit around and putz around and then say, "Hey, let's turn it up when the tournament starts." No, we're trying to win the conference. That's what we want to do: is put up conference championships. And I understand, you know, it's all about getting to the tournament. But the most difficult thing to do is to win a conference championship. That's much more difficult than just to make a little run there at the end of the year. But but to give yourself the best chance, win the league. Brandon Wilcoxon with Daily Egyptian. Uh, you know the history here, but you also know that there's been a bit of a drought in Southern Illinois. Do you feel any added pressure knowing that you're trying to do what is, seems to be difficult to do? In yeah, uh, th there's always pressure. Th th there just is. There's there's pressure to be good and, and have the high expectations. And when you don't have high expectations, that's pressure too. Uh, and I heard somebody say it the other day. I can't remember who it was, but but pressure is privilege. It, it, it's it, If you can look at it that way, uh, and, and so we want to get to that point where people expect us to be good and be able to deal with that pressure. With your associate head coach at Wright State taking your job now, do you anticipate being able to bring some of your assistants from there here and, well, by, and, and some of the players that were on your roster? Right well, there? you know, that, that's a little bit more delicate situation because I don't, I, you know, obviously with, with uh, Clint taking a job at Wright State, I, I'm not wanting to hurt Clint and uh, burn bridges back that way and uh, you know I, I think that the players at Wright State were fairly upset that, that I was involved in something because you know we're always talking to them when we recruit them about being here and staying here and being loyal and then all of a sudden look what coach does uh, and, and so you know I, I would work very hard to avoid trying to take any players in there even though you'd love to have them because they know your system they can help you get started but but we can work through that. The you know we'll work hard to put the staff together. But but yeah, I'm trying to get one or two of them to come. Do you feel that 
you know, because the reality is a lot of these players, you know, good players, they're they're not only are they looking to play for good schools, but look for markets that have these NIL opportunities. Uh, do you feel that that could lessen the quality of talent that you're looking for? And also, are you looking for the best kids or the right kids? You asked the question about the NIL again. I'm trying to understand Yeah, that. sure. Uh, you know, just NIL, it's obviously a big deal for athletes, student athletes now. You know, bigger programs have a lot more opportunities for NIL. Yeah. This is a mid-major. Uh, you know, you say that it's a big sell, the culture, the winning. How do you plan to sell that to recruits, you know, outside NIL? Because that's kind of what a lot of student athletes are looking at right now. They are. And and, and so, uh, like you say, you got to recruit the right kids, the kids – and the families that, that still care about relationship. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, but, but I, I don't care who you're talking to. If, if somebody offers you three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 and you're a young kid, it's, it, you know, you, you almost can't blame them. I mean, what, what are you going to say to them when they're looking at you in the face? Hopefully we can recruit guys where that's a problem. Uh, and, and, and then we'll deal with it. But, you know, I mean, people say, you know, the bigger schools have more resources. It only takes, it, it, now at this point, it only takes one person to change that. It really does, the right person. And, uh, you know, you can compete with those schools if, if you have the money. Now, you know, I mean, this, but you look at, and I was talking to somebody this morning who said, you know, look, the Yankees and the Dodgers don't win a World Series every year, and they have the most money. And so it's not always who has the most money that wins. And, You've obviously had a lot of years of experience, and a lot of times you can look at it, people look at it different ways, but you've had to establish a lot of recruiting bases at a lot of places. Do you think that's an advantage for you? Well, I think that, I think that it will be, yeah. I mean, when you look from, from South Dakota State to Wright State, and, you know, we're pretty much in between them now. We're a little farther south. But, uh, you know, the upper Midwest and, and o- over to Ohio – you know, you look at all that area, and, you know, we, we would consider Illinois still the most important state. You know, we, we have that covered. We have it covered. Yeah. Coach, you mentioned, you know, not really liking the direction where NIL and the portal is going. Is it possible to not completely lean in to where everyone else is, is kind of leaning in to, you know, hitting the portal and, and kind of maybe focus, like you said, maybe getting the, the high school seniors and, you know. I, yeah, I think that we're – uh, we're swimming upstream a little bit in terms of what other people are doing and just jumping in a portal and trying to build their team that way. Uh, but, but I've said this before, I, I'm not interested in it, in things just being transactional. I'm interested in relationships. I understand that the money's important and we want to do the very best we can to take care of those needs, but there still has to be a rela- relationship. There's, it, can't, it just can't be transactional. Yeah, I guess, you know, I, I, I don't know a lot in terms of how he coached because I didn't coach against his teams. But, you know, I, I know he's a good man, and I know he did, I know he did a good job, and, and I know he was very loved here as a man and as a coach and as a player. Uh, and I know he's very buttoned up, like he's very disciplined, and certainly that's the way we want to be too. Uh, in, in terms of their style and those kind of things, I'm less uh, familiar with it. Uh, you know, I would guess we probably play faster than he did because we play faster than most people. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm sure he was a defensive guy. Like, that. that's my focus. I'm probably just a little more free offensively. Have there been conversations yet with players on last year's SAE team about staying in Carbondale? Uh, I've talked to all of them but one uh, in terms of just getting a team meeting put together and then being able to have uh, some individual meetings right after that. And so, you know, with, with, with it being – uh, Easter here and guys gone and not having them all together. We're, we're trying to get together on Tuesday and we'll, we'll work from there. Coach, uh, in, in the same vein, uh, staff construction, any chance that there could be retain, retain anyone from the previous staff? Well, we're looking at it and I'll talk to them and, and we'll see. You know, if, if you can find the right guys that can, to get, that can help you, because that can help you with the relationships immediately if you, if you have the right guys. And so, so we're definitely going to look at it. Yes, sir. Hey, Tim, Todd Richards with KFBS. And, uh, you know, it, it was interesting the, the way your, your course changed, I guess, in a sense, for the search. You talked about it and how you really fell upon Coach Nagy. Could you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, we had a pretty good understanding of the criteria that we were looking for, right? And so I talked to 
a lot of coaches that first week. The good news is, um, I would say, there was a ton of interest, ton of interest in SIU, and I was very excited about that. Everybody that was on the top of my list was interested. The challenge was they are really good. Most of them were still playing. Some of them still are playing in the tournament. And so you're trying to navigate their, their playing windows, plus I wasn't the only one talking to them, right? And I have a pretty good idea who's talking to them. And, you know, there's uh, Missouri State was open, and we knew Drake, there's a good possibility that could open, plus other, you know, schools and other leagues. And so you're trying to juggle all that. Who can you get that would be willing to come in talk to you? Because you all want to see it face-to-face, and I want to meet them face-to-face. I didn't want to just talk to them on the phone or a Zoom. And so... <laughs> you know, some of the stuff I won't share names or any of that for them, but we were left at the altar once. Um, and turns out that was probably the best thing that could have happened to us. Um, and after that process started, um, I'm calling Scott. Literally, there were two coaches. Um, one of them I was trying to talk myself into to liking. And I'm, I'm talking to him and I know this sounds crazy, but because he didn't say anything, but I just kind of sensed in his voice, like, well, why aren't you talking to me? And uh, so turns out his his agent is a um, good friend of mine now through this process. And um, I didn't know that he represented him. And we were talking about some things and some people I wanted to talk to. He was helping me get, well, you know, if I want this coach, here's the agent, here's how you have to talk to him and so forth. And his name comes up, comes up, and I said, well, who represents him? And he says, I do. And I just remember there was this pause, and I was kind of joking. I said, well, why the hell didn't you say that sooner? Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how it all came up. And then I, I, I says, I'll talk to him, and it was uh, all systems go at that point. And so I think the first time I talked to Scott about him as a candidate was Tuesday morning. And talked for a long time, and uh, well, I shouldn't say too long of a time. As he said, he's not a man of many words, and he's not. He's very brief to the point. But we hit the things that I wanted to talk about. He wanted to talk about. And he said, "What's next steps?" I said, "Let's get you on a plane and get you out here, and let's see if it's a fit." Um, and I, I mean, I immediately liked him. Right? I mean, the stuff that he was saying from a basketball standpoint. That's what I like to hear, right? We're going to play inside out because right now the tray, everybody wants to play outside in and he likes big guys that are physical. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then he's like, yeah, I average 85 points a game. And I'm like, you had me at big guys that are that are nasty. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of it all happened so quick because I was talking to him about two other guys as references. <laughs> and then it kind of turned the table and, and then we got him here. And, and I, I couldn't be happier with where we landed and, when I say it's a search, it's definitely a search. Yes, sir. Would you say that if Scott had been on your radar maybe a week before, that maybe the process would have been a little sooner? Probably not. Uh, you know, we, we had to evaluate where we were at in uh, the marketplace, and so we had to step it up a little bit. Um, and that's what happened uh, with talking with trustees and others about kind of where we're at. And... Um, you know, it's expensive. It's expensive out there. And, uh, it, you know, it's it's funny. There's a couple of assistants at Illinois that I didn't go down that path with assistants, but you couldn't even, t- I wasn't even going to talk to them because they're still making as assistants more money than what we're paying uh, Coach Nagy. So, uh, yeah, we just, we had to step it up a little bit. And then that opened up some, some doors that we couldn't get into previous. Yes, sir. How rare or how common is it to find a coach like Nagy, a coach of his caliber who has all that experience, who has all that track record of winning? And how did you feel when you came upon a guy like that? Well, we were looking at a lot of guys like that, right? Because that was the criteria that we were looking for. The challenge is there's not a lot of guys like that. And they're not a secret, right? And like I say, the criteria we set, that's not like a magic formula. That's what most ADs are looking for. And uh, so, yeah, there's just very few of those guys. And again, I'm looking at people too that living in a rural market is not going to scare them, right? So again, that limits it even further because 
there's some people, and I didn't even bother calling them because I knew right off the bat they'd be scared going, no, nah, that's, that's not an environment for me. Um, but I knew that wouldn't be an issue uh, with, with Scott, even though he's living in a mar larger market now, but he's been in uh, Brookings, South Dakota. He's been in Edwardsville. I mean, he, he grew up in Illinois, and he's been to, to Southern many times, as he had said. So, um, yeah, I, I just... I, I, I'm thrilled that we were able to get that veteran of a coach with that seasoned. Uh, I can tell you that much. Yes, sir. You had your hand up. I was just going to ask you about what was your pitch to these coaches? You have a significant fundraising packet in the works right now. How did you present that to these coaches? How did you go about pitching the university, the resources here, the environment? To and and these guys? Yeah, I mean, Southern is, I really played to our, to our strengths, right? Because if you're Missouri State, let's say, you know, you've got a brand new, beautiful arena and you're in Springfield, Missouri, which is a town of, you know, it's a nice town. You're close to the Ozarks. You got all these nice, shiny things. And uh, that that's not us. So what I really tried to play to, to be honest with you, the first thing was our fan base uh, because we have the best. And I say it all the time. And it's true. We have the best fan base in the Missouri Valley. And as I would talk to coaches, you know, you can tell which co I mean, everybody likes to know that their sport is important. And I tell them that. I said, look, this is when I say this is Hoosier like, I said, you come here, you're going to be like Gene Hackman. You go out into the, the, you know, mom and pop little coffee shop, diner, having breakfast, getting your haircut, whatever. People are going to be coming up telling you, you need to sign Jimmy Chitwood and you need to run the picket fence. I said, that is Southern Illinois. And uh, I said, people love basketball here. So I said, if, if you want to be at a basketball school, well, people care about basketball. And it's important to these people, then SIU is a, a great place to be. And um, yeah, that, that's how I really tried to sell it, was with being a, you know, this is Hoosier-like. This is basketball land. So, yes, sir. When you make the tough decision to part ways with Brian, sure it's easier to do that when you have a, a backup plan of sorts. Did you have any kind of assurances or really any idea that you maybe had a guy in mind? And did you expect maybe it to be as drawn out as the search ended up being? Um, I didn't have anybody in my back pocket. No. And you, you know when you do that, that it's a risk that you might not be able to get what you want. Um, I had done enough research and enough back channeling throughout this process to learn that, okay, these would be guys that we'd want to talk to and there would be interest. That doesn't mean you were going to get them. And, you know, there was a lot of people wanted to talk to those guys. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I didn't know that we would be able to get that guy. Uh, when we started this process, there was nobody in the back pocket. There was nobody that I had talked to directly before any of this. Um, and. I mean, I think the only people that think this process was, was long were people on the outside. Um, I actually thought it went pretty fast. I mean, it was less than three weeks. And when you start from scratch and you got to do research and make sure these are candidates that you want. And like I say, you're, you're a search. You're trying to talk to people. It's not the people that are coming to talk to you because they want the job. It's me trying to find somebody I think it's going to be the right fit and then selling them on this job and at this point in time. And uh, so, yeah, I've, I've been on part of searches that are a lot longer than this. Um, ironically, uh, Larry Brown called me uh, this week uh, and we were talking and, um, and he said, Tim, this reminds me of the search when, when we got hired him at SMU because uh, it it actually dragged on a lot longer than this, but we were doing kind of the same thing, searching for our guys and thought we had somebody. Then things, you know, there's a lot of twists and turns, and then thank God we found Larry Brown in that case. And I think this is very, very similar. Yes, sir. Talk a little bit about how this, you're offering him six years, more money than Brian made. Uh, the expectations will have to be higher, I presume. So. You, 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 want to, you want to see the team get back to the NCAA tournament. Um, does he have with that kind of expectation, with that kind of salary, with that kind of contract? Do you expect that to happen sooner? Is that, is that pretty much what you're, what you're? Yeah, I mean, I think 
I was pretty clear about it. Um, I think Coach knows that. That I mean, we talked about it in the press conference, right? We want to get to the point. I mean, it still blows me away that we have not played on Sunday in St. Louis since 2006. It's a long time. And my expectation is that we're going to get to the point where that's more frequent. I don't know that it's going to happen every year. And I just needed to make sure that, you know, you don't panic, which a lot of people do because they're like, they're so worried about, like, I have this done in a week. And then next thing you know, they just hire somebody because that person's willing to take the job. And I, I did not want to do that. Um, I mean, don't get me long, wrong. I was feeling the pressure to, to try to wrap this up. But we knew, you know, I was going to stay on on the path and get what we're doing. There was a, uh, well, one, Matt Kupek was great about it. He kept telling me, Tim, stay the course, stay the course, stay the course. And um, one, the other night, there was this one national writer that was texting me, and I, I told him, I said, man, your batting average is really high. I don't know how he knew everybody I was talking to and other candidates. He goes, you got to be looking at this guy and this guy. And I'm like, what, do you have my binder? <laughs> Um, I said, because your batting average is pretty high. And, and I said, what was amazing about it is he's doing that with every search in America, right? But anyway, he said, hey, Tim, you're talking to the right guys. Stay on course. Keep talking to the types of coaches you're talking to. I thought that was interesting that a, a member of the media would, would say that. And uh, that one actually gave me a lot of energy when he said that. So it made me, made me feel good about the direction. So we time for one or two more. Yeah. Hey, Tim, uh you know, with the, with, the, with the portal closing on May 1st and Scott basically having a month, uh, how do you feel like it's going to go in terms of trying to round up a roster from scratch, sort of, and, and, and get together a staff to be able to be competitive right off the bat? I don't know. You're going to have to ask Scott that. He, yeah, that's what we hired him to do. But, uh, I mean, I get it. It's going to be a challenge. Um, but we've got, uh, what, there's going to be five new, or I guess there's four new coaches now. Everybody's anticipating a fifth new one in the league. We're not the only ones in this position. There's still coaches out there that, uh, positions that haven't been hired yet. So, yeah, I, I get it, but that's just the way of the world in this business today. Yes, sir. I think you 
was mentioned that there were conversations with last year's team about, you know, before they all made their decisions to enter the portal about whether to stay or whether to do all this. Do you know if there's been any conversations since the announcement? I know Coach has talked with them. Yeah, that's about all I know. I know he spoke with them on the phone. Um, I had had a, a, a Zoom call with we, – we put one for the team. Not everybody was on it, but just to kind of give them a heads up on what we were doing. And I told them, look, I, I get it. This is emotional. And um, if, if you want to put your name in the portal, we're here to help you. I would just encourage you before you make a decision to wait and see who we hire because it, you may like that. So One more from Tom Bruton. Just what – Sorry about that. Yeah. With the NIL and everything going on and fundraising and, and hitting a high point, was that taken into account in your coaching candidate with Coach Nagy? Yeah. I mean, we, we talked about it with every coach, uh, and that was the one thing. So when we had him in here for lunch, uh, I had Matt Kupek sitting on this side. I had Todd Reeser sitting on this side. And I said, look, there's a reason why the three of us are in here today. We understand the importance of NIL. We understand that we have to dramatically step up our game, and we're committed to help you. That's why we're all here, to send the message to you that we got to get better, and we're ready to go.